Santa may have shipping problems this year. Your news update and Royce and I make something out of nothing on this edition of State of the Bands Weekend, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage State of the Bands Weekend for October 9th, 2021. I'm Joshua Stark. Toy companies are racing to get their products to retailers as they grapple with a severe supply crunch which could mean sparse shelves for the crucial holidays. They're trying to find containers to ship their goods while searching for alternative ports. Some are flying in some of the toys instead of shipping by boat to ensure delivery before December 25th. And in some cases, like Basic Fun, they are leaving certain toys behind in China and waiting for costs to come down. Like all manufacturers, toy companies have been facing supply chain woes since the pandemic started and temporarily closed factories in China in early 2020. An anchored cargo ship in the Pacific is not a fixed point. It's different than parking a car. Even then, with a multi-ton anchor and brawny steel chains resting on the seabed, the massive vessels can move from shifting winds, ocean currents, and tides. A probe is continuing into what caused an offshore pipeline break that spilled tens of thousands of gallons of crude oil off Southern California. But one emerging possibility is that a cargo ship, inadvertently or not, dragged its anchor along the ocean floor, catching the steel, concrete-covered oil pipe and pulling it over a hundred feet until it was pierced or cracked open the way pressure fractures an eggshell. Federal transportation investigators said preliminary reports suggest the failure may have been caused by an anchor that hooked the pipeline, causing a partial tear. A ship at anchor will move around quite a bit as tides and winds change direction, said Stephen Brown, a professor of marine transportation at California State University Maritime Academy. A home in Massachusetts severely damaged by fire has been listed on the market with an asking price of $399,000. WBZ TV reported that the listing is for a home in Melrose, a suburb of Boston, and is evidence of how hot the housing market is. In August, industry groups listed the median sale price of a single-family home in the state to be between 535000 and 552000 The online listing for the burned three-bedroom, 1,857-square-foot home starts with a call-out to contractors and continues houses in need of a complete renovation or potential tear-down and rebuild. Buyer to do due diligence, house being sold as is. Israeli archaeologists have found a rare ancient toilet in Jerusalem dating back more than 2,700 years, where private bathrooms were a luxury in the Holy City, authorities said Tuesday. The Israeli Antiquities Authority said the smooth, carved limestone toilet was found in a rectangular cabin that was part of a sprawling mansion overlooking what is now the old city. It was designed for comfortable seating, with a deep septic tank dug underneath. A private toilet cubicle was very rare in antiquity, and only a few were found to date, said Yakov Bila, the director of the excavation. Only the rich could afford toilets, he said, adding that a famed rabbi once suggested that to be wealthy is to have a toilet next to his table. Animal bones and pottery found in the septic tank could shed light on lifestyle and diet of people at the time. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Council. This week's State of the Bands blog includes, Hey, it's October, water, water, nowhere, and brother, can you spare a $1 trillion coin? All this and more in this week's State of the Bands blog, available now at arbitragetrade.com. Now, let's go to the president and CEO of Arbitrage, Mr. Royce Wells, for more. Hey, Royce, I'm smelling pumpkin spice in the air. That could mean only one thing, right? Uh, It's back at Starbucks. Well, yeah, that too, but I mean, everywhere else. I mean, you could get, I don't know, pumpkin spice motor oil at this point. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, well, it's October. It's it's fall, and people, love is in the air, or at least maybe snuggling. Everywhere you look around? Yeah, maybe snuggling. And speaking of snuggling, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so don't forget to save the tatas. Absolutely. And speaking of saving things, people are talking about saving the environment. Have you heard about, uh, this is a little weird, uh, commercial vegan, not just regular vegan, commercial vegans. People are trying to make less impact on the environment, trying to be more safe, trying to be more green and save the environment. And uh, part of that, uh, they're they're questioning if leather um, is vegan or not. Should we be using leather substitutes? Should we be using something like, you know, I don't know. Uh, fake feathers, fake leather, fake things, or or is that just a little bit too far vegan? You tell me. I don't know, but I always like uh, saving the environment. Uh, I know that there's a company in um, in Europe that actually does a vegan leather based on cactus. So there we go. That sounds like it could be painful. Could be painful. I I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I tell you something else that's painful, man. I'm starting to pay on my car, and it's a <laughs> it's a gas car. I mean, I knew what I was getting into there, but yeah. But I mean, remember when we spoke about Ford last uh, last weekend, last right? Week, yeah. Um, well, the the effort to go green is still impacting us, right? True. So. Uh, the problem is, where are we getting the fuel? Because cars still have fuel. It may not be gas, so it's electricity. Bingo. So you have to have materials to make batteries. So yeah. I think there is a shortage. Our people are realizing that basically, hey, all these batteries require cobalt. And that cobalt is coming from deep in the environment. And some people are like, hey, we're trying to stay green. Let's not hurt the environment. So they're actually stopping them from mining the cobalt to be able to make the the green cars. Yeah, and that's one thing that we talked about a, a while back, actually. You probably don't even remember this, but we talked about the environmental impact of electric cars. Because you plug it in, hey, that's free energy. No, no, it's not. It actually comes back to a lot of, uh, a lot of electric plants that need coal to make... The electricity, which has a carbon footprint. So your net... Science. Yeah, your net, not good. Exactly. We're science adjacent right here on uh, Arbitrage State of the Bands. Uh, Weekend, more, more weekend coming up right after this. See on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday can't do that. Uh Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day, and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. 
Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Even if you don't use it, everybody knows about the six-hour outage at Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. It was a headache for many casual users, but far more serious for the millions of people worldwide who rely on the social media sites to run their businesses or communicate with relatives, fellow parents, teachers, or neighbors. When all three services went dark Monday, it was a stark reminder of the power and reach of Facebook, which owns the photo sharing and messaging apps. Around the world, the breakdown at WhatsApp left many at a loss. In Brazil, the messaging service is by far the most used app in the country, installed on 99% of smartphones, according to tech pollster MobileTime. WhatsApp has become essential in Brazil to communicate with friends and family, as well as for a variety of other tasks, such as ordering food, offices, various services, and even the courts have had trouble making appointments and phone lines became overwhelmed. Hundreds of thousands of Haitians in their homeland and abroad fretted over the WhatsApp outage. Many of the country's 11 million people depend on it to alert one another about gang violence in particular neighborhoods or to talk to relatives in the U.S. about money transfers and other important matters. Haitian migrants traveling to the U.S. rely on it to find each other or to share key information such as safe places to sleep. In rebel-held Syria, where the telecommunication infrastructure has been disrupted by war, residents and emergency workers rely mostly on internet connections. But hospitals treating COVID-19 patients in the region were thrown into panic. They lost contact with oxygen suppliers who have no fixed location and are normally reached via WhatsApp. One hospital sent staff members searching for oxygen at nearly two dozen facilities, said Dr. Fadi Hakim of the Syrian American Medical Society. In Lima, Peru, the breakdown complicated dental technician Mary Meja's job. Like most Peruvian medical workers, she uses WhatsApp for a multitude of tasks, including scheduling appointments and ordering crowns. Sometimes the doctor will be working on a patient and I need to contact a technician for a job, she said. To have to step away and make a phone call, it trips us up. We've become so accustomed to this tool. Millions of Africans use WhatsApp for all their voice calls, so people felt they were cut off from the world, said Mark Tinka, a a Ugandan who heads engineering at CECOM, a South Africa-based internet infrastructure company. Many Africans also use WhatsApp to connect with relatives in other countries. Facebook said the outage was due to an internal error related to a configuration change, but gave no details. This outage came amid a crisis at Facebook, accused by a whistleblower on 60 Minutes and on Capitol Hill of profiting from hate and division and suppressing research showing Instagram contributes to body image problems, eating disorders, and thoughts of suicide in young women. For small businesses, the outages meant hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost revenue. Sarah Murdoch runs a small Seattle-based travel company called Adventures with Sarah and uses Facebook Live videos to promote her tours. She estimates the breakdown cost her thousands of dollars in bookings. Heather Rader runs How Charming Photography in Linton, Indiana. She takes photographs for schools and sports teams and makes yard signs with the photos. She has her own website, but said parents and other customers mainly try to reach her through social media. More after this. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. 
A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Royce, when's the last time you saw that wonderful blockbuster Waterworld? It's been at least uh, 10 years, at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Costner and, and all those uh, all those people looking for fresh water. Well, it seems like California has got a solution for that. Yeah, giant air conditioner. That's exactly what it is, basically. Giant air conditioner, giant um, giant dehumidifier kind of thing. Yep, and so they're collecting the water, and it's literally creating between 200 gallons and uh, 1,900 gallons of water a day. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. Okay, but they're literally pulling it from the air. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're they're literally pulling water from thin air, um, and and the thing is, the science is good. It's it's there, uh, basically pulling humidity from the air, and it works better in humid places, uh, foggy places, things like that. Uh, so basically, um, any place that it gets, it gets. You sticky, know, humid, sticky, yeah. sticky, humid, that sort of thing. Any place in the United okay, States, West. I'm going to ask because if this is nothing more than a giant dehumidifier, what's the uh, footprint? What's the? Uh, it, does it take a lot of energy to run? Because well, yeah. air conditioners do, right? Of course it does. Now, not only does it take a lot of energy to run, but you know, we were talking about in the in the last segment, we were talking about how electric cars kind of have their own carbon footprint and people don't really realize it well same situation here i mean you're running a big huge air conditioner yeah basically a big huge dehumidifier uh not only that but uh, i think john uh, not john don don johnson has a solution for that okay he bought one of the smaller ones. By the way, they range in price from about 30000 to about 200000 Yeah, I was about to say, they're not cheap. Uh, nowhere near. But um, as long as you're throwing money at it, he, he added solar to his house, and uh, he basically bought one to, to try to support his garden and realized, hey, it'll support my garden and whatever else I want to do. And he's running off of solar, so basically... It's not costing him any additional energy costs to run it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So these machines, they're made for homes and offices and ranches and that sort of thing. They dehumidify the air and and basically filter water. It's drinkable water right out of a tap. Yeah. I, I wonder if this is going to... Uh put Costco out of business. I know they sell a lot of water. Oh, they absolutely do. If you think about the amount of water that just Costco, uh, Costco basically, um, for the amount that you can get a, a, a bottled water at Costco, um, you can basically produce the water and it costs a lot less in the long run. Yeah, in the long run, it it, it probably will cost cost a lot, lot less. And hey, it, it, think about it. Before we know it, we'll be back at Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. People are going to be fighting for water, and very few people, maybe these people with these machines, will be the new aristocracy, the new uh, leaders to uh, hoard and give out water as they see fit. I'm but Kevin Costner. Leaders. I'm Kevin Costner. I call it right now. I want a jet ski. We're going to be doing this. It's water world all over again. I'm, I'm thinking more spice. Let the spice flow. <laughs> wow. Dune to, to water world to Dune in two seconds. That's impressive. Absolutely. Back with more after this on Arbitrage State of the Bands Weekend. Stick around. Help. Ajuda. Bang Ju. Hey, Dame. Help. In the wake of a disaster, there are many people from all backgrounds and all walks of life who need help. Help is available through FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We're here to provide help to all those who need it. Help. Bang Ju. Hey, Dame. Bang Ju. Help. If you or someone you know has been affected by a disaster, call us at 800-621-FEMA. If your home or property has been damaged or destroyed, you've lost your job or income, or face other emergency needs, please call the Federal Emergency Management Agency at 800-621-FEMA. FEMA. 
Help is here. A public service message brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Rev up your engines, traders. It's winners and losers. Oil edition. This winter up 42% engages in the acquisition, exploration, development, and production of crude oil and natural gas in Egypt and Canada. The company holds interests in four production sharing concessions, which includes West Garib, West Bakir, Northwest Garib, and South Gazlat, Egypt, and owns production and working interest in facilities in the Cardium Light Oil and Manville Liquid Rich Gas Assets in the Hamatan area of West Central Alberta, Canada. Transglobe Energy, symbol TGA, starts at 2.22 a year. Next, this winter, up 37%, produces and sells specialty hydrocarbon products in North America and internationally. Its specialty products segment offers various lubricating oils, white mineral oils, solvents, petrolatums, waxes, synthetic lubricants, and other products that are used primarily as new material components for basic industrial, consumer, and automotive goods. Calumet Specialty Products, symbol CLMT, starts at 1087 a share. Last this winter, up 32% engages in the acquisition, exploration, development, and production of oil and natural gas in Texas and in New Mexico. Ring Energy, symbol REI, starts at 391 a share. Losers this week, this loser down 91% invests in infrastructure and infrastructure-like businesses that provide services to corporations, government agencies, and individual customers, primarily in the United States. It operates through three segments, Atlantic Aviation, MIC Hawaii, and Corporate and Other. Macquarie Infrastructure, symbol MIC, starts at 371 a share. Next, this loser down 15%, provides hardware, software, and on-site services to companies in the petroleum, mining, and extraction industry in the People's Republic of China. Recon Tech, symbol RCON, starts at 242 a share. And last, at 12% down, this company focuses on the acquisition, exploration, and development of oil and natural gas properties in the United States. U.S. Energy, symbol USEG starts at $3.99 a share. Winners and Losers is provided for informational purposes only and does not constitute advice and trading. Percentages and stock prices were current as time of recording. Arbitrage Trade Analytics LLC is solely responsible for the content of this podcast, but you should seek out the assistance of a licensed professional for investment advice. More after this on Arbitrage State of the Bands Weekend. Okay, gang. So, chances are there'll never be an emergency ever, ever again. Mm -hmm. But, just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. So, who's going to do what? Anyone? Uh... Yeah, okay, perfect. We'll figure it out as we go. So, who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Ah, good point. So, uh, we all know who to call if something happens then, right? I'd have to call Jill, Devin, Melissa, Karen, and... Bruce. And I will try to call all of you, but Greg doesn't have a cell phone. Dad's phone will have a dead battery. No doubt. And Julie will be on the phone with Jill, Devin, Melissa, Karen, and Bruce. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. A public service announcement brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. <clears throat> Who, me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. 
A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hey, Royce, can I borrow some money? Um, sure, why not? I'm thinking about $1 trillion. What do you think? Um, and Monopoly money, maybe. How about platinum? Um, plutonium? What? Platinum. Platinum. Um, you've been reading the news again, haven't you? I have. I I used to collect coins, so I'm kind of in this in this purview uh, of numismatics, right? Which is collecting Co- coins. Collecting coins, yes. So some politicians have kind of come up with a silver bullet for the debt problem. Uh, oh, that's not a silver bullet. They talked about it in 2013. They they did. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let, let's roll it back a little bit. Back in 2013, Barack Obama was having some problems trying to get people on board, trying to trying to take care of the national debt, right? Yes. Minting a $1 trillion platinum coin. I just want to go play the slots with that coin. That's all I want to do. I do as well, but there are some serious proponents to this. Uh, talking about trying to flood the treasury with cash, uh, you know, it's a token of all tokens. It's something that that is actually physical. Yeah. Okay. Will would be minted. It is not minted right now, but it would be minted. Okay. And basically, whoever bought the thing would have a one of one. One trillion dollar coin, not to be circulated. It's a proof, what they call a proof, right, of platinum, and it would have to be. It would have to be through the treasury, which, technically speaking, technically speaking, the treasury can mint and issue platinum bullion coins and proof platinum coins, um, without going through all the red tape. Without going through the red tape, one trillion dollars. You know what? I like this idea. I like this idea a lot. And here's why, right? Okay. You take that trillion dollar coin and then you go buy as much Bitcoin as you get your hands on. Wow. Right? Okay. And then now you have a government that has a lot of money and then what's back in it is that giant coin. Yeah. So it can't fail, right? Right. And when you need more Bitcoin, print another coin. There you go. A Seems lo- like, hey, I think I'm going to go run for office. <laughs> now that's kind of scary, but um, the na- the national uh, the national thing definitely will be hitting right around October 18th because yeah, that's uh, where we reach our debt ceiling, and right? we uh, Yellen has to make a decision. So yeah. uh, I I don't want her job though. Just for the record, I want a coin. I want I want maybe your face on that coin. What do you What do you think? Um, no. Um, no? Definitely someone else. <laughs> okay. Well, ideas have been raised. Uh, Donald Trump being one of those. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay. That, maybe. That was from left field, but okay. We can well, do that. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chuck E. Uh, Cheese, perhaps. Hey, why not Scrooge McDuck? Come on. Scrooge McDuck. Absolutely. I am all for that. No, no. I got it. I got it. Since we've been talking about green all episode... I want Captain Planet on that coin. Our powers combine. Yes. It's kind of scary when our powers combine. You know that? Yeah, actually it is. But, <laughs> hey, I like it. It's worked so far. Join us for the next uh, State of the Bands weekend where we talk about more stuff like this and hopefully uh, make you some money in the meantime. Go to arbitragetrade.com. Stop watching and start living see on page have a great weekend that the projections need to be tornado next thursday seriously thursday can't do that Uh uh-uh this is really inconvenient i have yoga that day i have no time for this so i can't do thursday but i can do friday disasters don't plan ahead you can talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency don't wait Communicate. 
Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is a privately held market research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the content of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to be investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, please visit Arbitrage 